to uh, CAD, count, uh, CAD Down and Dirty. My name is Carl Felper, and I'm going to be your moderator here. Uh, the origins of this go back to last April when we had our CAD seminar, which is entitled CAD Is It For You? And while I think uh, we got a lot out of that, uh, it was a bit lofty, a bit theoretical, and certainly set the stage for what we have now. And at that time, we recognized that what was needed after that was something more along the lines of what's it going to take, that is me being a freelance designer, typical of our, one of our members, what's it going to take to get me into CAD without a lot of this big support structure of training and all that sort of thing that the MBA people who work for computer companies have, you know, on their charts. So that's why we call it CAD Down and Dirty. The four panelists you have are people who have bravely uh, developed a considerable expertise in CAD without a lot of this fancy infrastructure that large corporations can afford. And they've done it in different ways to reflect their different furniture design practices. So uh, uh, the, the two of them use uh, DOS-based machines and two of them use Macintoshes. Uh, and I'm sure that the, our emphasis is not on the computer uh, technical details, but rather upon how they use this to make money for their practice. With that, I'll introduce the first speaker, which is Ardo Sabo. Uh, Ar Ardo uh, has been a member of ASFD for many years now, I know. And, uh, I'm sorry? Ten years. Ten years. <laughs> Couldn't be any longer than that. And uh, he studied at the Art Academy of Hungary and was a graduate with honors of the Parsons School of Design in New York. He's been a furniture designer for 32 years. His practice includes occasional case goods, wicker and rattan, and accessories. He also does graphic design. He's been an a ASFD director, and he, he also uh, publishes our directory. I might add that Otto also does graphic design, in addition to furniture design, on the computer. With that, uh, Otto Sabo. Thank you, Carl. Uh, before we start, I would like to just ask a couple of questions from uh, all of you. Uh, how many of you do you use computers now in the audience? Two? Two of you. Um, is it, do you use the App, Apple Macintosh system or DOS system? Something DOS, different? Unix. Unix. Third one. Good. Uh, and the rest of you are considering buying a computer system, I presume. Good. Uh, we are going to follow a certain kind of format, so I'm going to stick to that too. Uh, the scope of my furniture design practice uh, is quite varied. I do uh, all types of uh, furniture, occasional furniture, uh, uh, case goods, uh, folding chairs and tables, whip and rattan. And I work for uh, mostly medium-sized companies. And uh, my work involves uh, doing the sketches. And almost in all cases, uh, I do full-size detailed drawings. Now, next question is, how did I get involved with computers and CAD design? I think Judy's smiling in the back. And the reason for it is because about six years ago, I was down at a market and I went to her office and we had some time and she says, well, I just got a new computer, Macintosh, Mac Plus. Why don't you come over here and just play with it? So I sat in front of it and uh, pushed the buttons and I played with it. So it was very interesting, but I really didn't pay too much attention to it. After the market, I went back to, to the office and I talked to the other fellows and I said that, I had my first experience with the computer, but uh, we decided not to uh, go ahead with the, uh, to buy a computer. Uh, the next market, I was fortunate enough to uh, go to see Tom Keller's computer system, which at that, that time, which is about six years ago, was a, uh, a very involved, very expensive system. He had to have a separate room, air-conditioned room for his mainframe, and, uh, as I understand it, that system costs $250,000 or more. So that kind of scared me too. But eventually, uh, within a year, uh, I got 
more interested and I started to check into it. And eventually I bought my first Mac Plus. I did not, I didn't buy it to use it as a, as a CAD system. I basically bought it to do my work processing and financial work and that type of thing. But eventually it started to evolve towards uh, designing and eventually um, I looked at some different software and uh, I selected a VersaCAD program. Basically I spent about 60% of my time on the computer and half of that or better is CAD work. It's just for your information. Now, I consider the com computer as a tool. It's a very uh, precise, accurate tool. And uh, I, use it, I use it a lot. It will never replace my other work, which is uh, done freehand sketches. And uh, I still do uh, some of my details on the, the same traditional way. But uh, more and more I spend the time and, and do it with the computer. I also use my system to make a presentation uh, renderings and sketches. And a little later on I will show you uh, what they look like. When I started to buy the equipment, uh, everything was uh, a lot more expensive than today. As time goes by, the price of equipment falls dramatically. So let me show you the first, first transparency. On the left here, <coughs> I bought a Macintosh 2 with a 1 megabyte of memory and 40 megabyte of uh, hard disk. And that system, uh, five years ago, I paid $4,000 for it. That was not enough. I had to start upgrading it. And uh, if you see on the right hand side, uh, on the miscellaneous, first I had to add uh, RAM chips means uh, these are the processing chips, which is the heart of the, the computer system. I uh, spent $2,000 on, on those extra chips, but I was caught in the time period when everything was, there, were, there was a shortage of chips, so I paid really top dollars for it. Today you can buy the same uh, number of chips for uh, a fraction of probably about four or five hundred. Going to the next column here, um, I'm using a 13-inch uh, color monitor. That's about $750, and you do need a uh, color board to go with it, and that was $549. For output devices, I'm using a razor writer, which at that time cost pretty much $4,000. Today, you can buy the same or better uh, laser writers for half the price. Uh, currently, I'm also using a, a brand new Hewlett Packard Desk Writer C, which is a color a printer. It's a fabulous machine, and the selling price today is uh, only about uh, seven, eight hundred dollars. Uh, I'm going to show you some sketches, and uh, you will see uh, what I'm talking about. I'm also using a uh, fax modem to uh, fax information or send other data to uh, clients. Um, I bought this Everton model, which at that time was $428. It is a vital, vital link between me and my clients. I use it almost every day. For input devices, um, I'm using a Microtech color scanner, which uh, just about a year ago was $1,750. <coughs> Less than a year, you can buy a better model for about $1,500. <laughs> this is how the 
price of that drop is it's incredible. But you have to start somewhere. Um, I also have a need for an extern external hard drive where you store a, a lot of your uh, uh, applications and uh, data. I chose the LLC's uh, Tsunami 210, which is, I think, it's a re reasonable price, $12.99. That's 210 megabytes of information. That's quite a lot. For software, um, I selected VersaCAD. And the reason for it is because at that time, I went to a dealer, and he showed me both the AutoCAD system. Uh, AutoCAD is another uh, drafting system. And VersaCAD. I, I really spent a lot of time um, uh, with both of them. But to me, VersaCAD was a lot more user-friendly. And I stayed with it, and I liked it very much. At that time, for the complete package, I paid $1,600. And eventually, um, I broke down and had to add an accelerator board to my system, which even at today's cost, it's $2,300. You can only buy a computer for that kind of money. But when you are working with CAD, uh, speed is, is the essence. And when you refresh your screen, and if you have to sit in front of your uh, uh, monitor and wait, whether it's uh, two seconds or 15 seconds, it just drives you crazy. And, and you have to do this all the time. So that is eventually, it's, it's, it's a must one day or another. So whether you buy it, build it to the com computer or not. Now, if you look at this chart here, I made two comparisons. A moderately priced uh, monochrome uh, Apple Macintosh CAD system starting with a very good computer, the Mac 2CI. Today you can get it with a 5 megabytes of uh, RAM and 105 meg uh, hard drive for 3,975. Remember, I paid 4,000 for the, my first system. Big difference. Uh, for display, uh, you can get a 19-inch black and white mo uh, monochrome uh, monitor for about $1,169. These are all street prices uh, by, through, uh, through the mail, you know, your phone in, and you uh, want to go over. And you definitely need one output device, and I selected the Microtex 2 laser printer, that's about $2,200. And for VersaCAD, if you buy the 2D package alone, um, that's $600. And for drafting purposes, you don't want any, anything more because the rest of it uh, is the 3D portion. And for, for my purposes, uh, you don't need it. So for the total, you don't have to write these things down because I have a chart I will do with you after this. Okay. So if you look at the basic starter uh, system, uh, it's 7900 now, I made another comparison for a really excellent top-of-the-line uh, system. You would start with a Mac FX. That's the fastest system today. With 8 megabytes of uh, chips in it, 210 um, megabytes of uh, hard disk. That's about, you can buy it for $5,869. Now, why do I suggest for anybody to buy the best model. Because in CAD work, as I said earlier, you need to work fast. Fast. And uh, once you start putting more information into your computer, it starts slowing down. At the beginning, it's not noticeable. But when you have a lot of information, you know, all mathematical calculations, your system starts slowing down. And believe me, it is noticeable unless you have um, accelerators and so forth and so on. A 19-inch color monitor with the color board is expensive. This is about uh, the basic, the lowest price uh, you can get is uh, $2,795. You can buy a 
can buy uh, color monitors up to five thousand dollars. But this is excellent. For output devices, I would suggest a laser printer, about two thousand dollars a year. Um, a color pr uh, printer, it's about eight hundred dollars. Also, you need the modem. But your main expense will come in when you are considering your product. This is absolutely devastating. And the problem is because our furniture details don't fit on a small piece of paper like an architect drawing. Uh, my drawings, I usually go anywhere from six, seven feet long. You do a chime or a clock or whatever. If I go on a 36 inch wide paper, it's, it's seven feet, eight feet long. And the only plotters available for that are the top of the line models. You put in a huge roll of paper at the bottom and, and the plotter pulls in the necessary length of paper, cups it off, and then starts working with it. So you really have to uh, pay a top dollar for it. There are two very good uh, models. One is Hewlett Packard's uh, Rackmaster and uh, or Utah's, uh, which is a Japanese uh, printer. I'm considering buying that one because it does drawings in pencil or in ink. And why would I consider a pencil line? Drawings? Because my factory is like to make cha changes. So if you send them a drawing, uh, all beautifully done in ink, you can't erase it. Um, but if, if you do it in, in pencil, for small, small changes, they can just simply erase it, make a change. Normally, the changes are minor, but they do make the changes. So you have to consider <coughs> about roughly plus or minus around the nine thousand dollars. That's a filler. If you want to go full blast uh, for a VersaCAD program, that's uh, that's two uh, thousand three hundred ninety-five dollars. And um, one very important thing you must have. Backup system. You know what backup system means. Um, as you are generating documents, you must make a backup <coughs> of your desk because if your computer crashes, if you have any problem with it, if you can erase your uh, uh, documents, and you have to be able to put it back into your uh, computer again. Uh, this particular thing I'm showing here, the APS archive that media is one of the latest in technology. It's an absolutely fantastic uh, backup system. It's very inexpensive. It's only $1,500. It works with a um, regular uh, cartridge you use for a hi-fi set when you are making recordings. But it's, made, it's making the recording digitally very fast, and it, uh, the amount of information you can put on a 60-meter tape is just mind-boggling. You can put on this tape 1.3 gigabyte of information. Do you know what a gigabyte is? Do you know, can you, do you have any idea what a megabyte is? Well, one megabyte of information is roughly Consider a, a brochure, let's say 30 pages, printed on both sides, about 200 copies of that. That's one megabyte. One gigabyte is 1,000 megabytes, and 1.3 would be 1,300 megabytes. Of so if you are considering, and you should, a backup system, just go with the best one. Because you can. Uh, back up on some disk too, but you have to put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out, and it takes forever. Oh, I'm sorry, one comparison I wanted to make here. If you buy the same system, get the bottom line, uh, I made a comparison, comparison with AutoCAD. AutoCAD is very expensive. Uh, and you have to buy the whole package. It's about $3,500. That's the, Versa, uh, that's the uh, Macintosh version. They don't break it down like VersaCAD does. For VersaCAD, you can buy the 2D version for $600 or the complete package for $2,395. Uh, 
I believe I already told you why did I select uh, Versacad. Um, one thing about this uh, software uh, package is that it's very easy to learn. Like most of the uh, Macintosh oriented software, uh, if you follow your instruction books, uh, you can learn Versacad in about two weeks. You can be quite uh, proficient with it in about six months, and you might be a pretty good user and expert in about a year's time. There's a high learning curve, no question about it. But of course, if you spend more time on it, you can learn it faster. What can I do with my system? I have some drawings here which I will pass out. I think that's the only and the best way to show it. I will show you the first one, for instance, a um, printout I'm done. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do it very quickly. I'm going to just well, hand out. Questions, you know, questions later. Hand it out. Okay. I'll hand I'm it. going to hand out some of the black and white printouts and uh, some of the color ones. I brought too much material. Just divide the room. Well, just start in one end, and then they can pass it along, and then we can start with the other package. I also brought along uh, some of the uh, color uh, uh, presentations, which I do on that um, Hewlett Packard printer. Here you can see, this is a very basic way of uh, coloring a scan image. But you take the same thing and you add a little color and immediately you have a, quite a different impact. I will just show this quickly like this. See, you can color it any way you want to and you can have all kinds of background to it. Are these for us to keep copy or just pass them on and look at Just pass them on. You can combine it with graphics if you like to. Now, all of these, what you are seeing in the color versions, these were scanned images. So I scan a ink drawing into the computer, then I put it into a desktop publishing system where I can manipulate it any way I want to blow it up. I, I can reduce it, take portions of it in color. And a portion of it. Number of colors? I can select any color. Maybe With a computer, you have uh, millions of colors, basically, mm -hmm. but uh, you are basically limited by the number of uh, colors here. Mm -hmm. you can produce. control that shatteration, too. Well. Yes. Could we uh, save some of the questions till the end? Because I want to get this. I'd like to, I'm sorry, I should announce it. I'd like to get everyone's presentation and then questions at the end for everyone. Here's one ex interesting example, for instance, that on one sheet you can combine all kinds of colors. I would have a lot more to say, but I ran out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, our next uh, speaker is um, uh, Paul Lundquist. Paul is a affiliate member of the SFD. He's a blacksmith, uh, and uh, in in Burnsville, North Carolina, his background is at Graduate University of Texas in business, and he studied programming. It's an interesting start for a blacksmith, and he was a programmer for the uh, the United States Air Force for four years, and the last eight years he's been a blacksmith. Uh, briefly, he flirted with selling computers in the early days, as he puts it, and. Um, uh, his, uh, his blacksmith work in, include uh, uh, work for Irwin Lambeth and for the Brass Collection. And with that, I'll give you Paul Lundquist. Hi. 
Uh, I'm on the small uh, end of this. It's, it's the budget plan. Uh, <laughs> and, and following up, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as tall as Carl either. I hate, I hate microphones. Is it okay if I don't do a microphone? Sure, sure. sure. Uh, we've got a little outline to follow so you can be comparison. Uh, and I'm going to do a, a little note, and I'll do a few slides. It'll be extemporaneous, and, and we'll see where that goes. Uh, my furniture design practice is just getting started. I've done other things in blacksmithing over not eight, but 18 uh, years, and that included railings, gates, multiple story curved staircases, all that. Well, I tell you, it's easier to install or ship a table. So for about three years now, I've been making uh, tables out of iron. Um, I also design and make iron furniture by the single piece for decorators and, and for individuals, and still sometimes do the architectural work. My future plans include a much larger percentage of business in furniture design and in prototype building, uh, and perhaps training people in somebody else's factory, because I don't want to swing hammers all my life. I'd rather push a mouse than a pen. <laughs> And there looks like there's plenty of room for a designer who intimately knows the material and the process and the art history of, of ironwork. And my focus is hand-forged iron as opposed to uh, the fabricated approach. All this has influenced the way I use my computer now and how I will be in, in the future. Um, why do I think I needed CAD? Uh, three reasons. I expected it to take over much of the repetitive, idiot work of doing drawings over and over again. I expected it to offer ways of manipulating images that I couldn't do in any other way. Third, I expected it to make me look good on paper. I don't draw well. Uh, I draw much better with that hammer than I do with, <laughs> when I, with a pencil. Aside from the CAD part of it, I also wanted a computer to help me get organized. That's an old saw, but in my case it really worked. Salutary effect on the top of my desk, I tell you. And to help me with marketing presentations, again, to make me look good on paper. And also, frankly, for recreation. I think they're fun. Um, I was steered into the Macintosh by uh, an acquaintance at a chance meeting. Um, one two-hour session convinced me to go out and buy one of those machines as soon as I could. And my past, that, I should say the background, my past attempts, there were three different times I tried assiduously to learn to use a DOS computer. For my personality, for whatever reason, it just didn't click. Um, that ended in frustration and, and failure, and that, that really annoyed me all the more, because I knew these things could be it. There's a promise implied in personal computers. It's been out there floating around for years, and yet to get to the delivery of that promise sometimes is a rocky road. I got some cost figures on another sheet, and I'll show those in a minute. Uh, there's a question of who put all this together for you. Was it a consultant or, or somebody? And I did it myself, and I determined at the outset that I was going to support my own uh, machinery, and that's just my personality. I need, I need to know what's going on, I need to know how to fix it, I need to know how to modify it, that's just me. I also live in a very rural location, so it, it helps. And um, learning about all this, to do all that, I'm, I'm mostly self-taught. Um, I have bought a good sized library of books and that sort of thing. I read the magazines, I go to user groups, occasionally I go to an exposition, and I've attended a couple of short courses on small aspects of, of doing these things. And it keeps on evolving. Um, slide portion. Let me move the machinery around. like mine. You can't buy the exact computer I've got anymore in SE. You buy a classic instead. $1,400 for the computer, and I would really recommend putting all the memory it'll take in right away. For me, that was a couple hundred bucks. I bought a fax modem and a little hand scanner, not an expensive scanner, uh, and a search protector. This search protector costs a lot more than others. At 120 bucks, it guarantees what's plugged in to the search protector. If it fries your computer, they buy you a new computer, not only a new search protector. It's a deal. Software. Simple drawing programs, an illustrator program, uh, a program to uh, manipulate images, I'll show you in a minute, 
and another drawing program. Total cost, hard to read down there on this slide, 35.63 for all of that. Yeah, there's a few other things I've done, but we're not including your word processing programs and the like. Why do I do all this? Well, that's where I live. This is my front. This is my front yard, <laughs> and and I really need these things to help me get connected with the world. Here is the tallest mountain east of the Mississippi River, and it's six miles, air miles from me. It also has a bearing on me supporting the system myself and learning enough about it. My background. These are the kinds of things I used to make. This this guy is about four inches across from one side to the other. That's what hand forged iron has been for small objects. I'm translating that into furniture and keeping the look of it. Why am I doing it? Well, or rather, how am I doing it with the computer? That's the whole setup. Um, the $3,500 is sitting on top of the $5 hollow core door. Furniture? Well, maybe someday. Um, the simple little flat uh, uh, printer uh, that, that costs $500. It, it is the black and white version of the color printer that Arto uses. Uh, there's a scanner here, the computer itself, and etc. This is the usual mode with the instruction book open in the middle of the desk. That's, that's how I learn things. I just go through, try them. If I can, can't figure it out, the telephone's right there. And that connects me to the rest of the world. The hand scanner I use, I think, really helps a lot. It's inexpensive. You can try it out. If it didn't work, and probably sell it and you don't have much invested. Why is that good? If you're designing, you're doing it with a pencil, pencil and paper, pen and ink. How do you get that stuff into the computer? You see this photograph down here. It happens to be a balcony I took a snapshot of when I was traveling in France. I simply drag the little hand scanner across, or if it's a flatbed scanner, it goes like a Xerox machine. It appears instantly on the computer screen. Once it's in the computer, you can manipulate it. Use a, a window, you can pull down all sorts of effects. You can change the look of it, the size of it. Here it is big, here it is little. Uh, you can do almost anything you want with it. You can trace over it and make, you can make it be a template in the background in a drawing program. Lots of things you can do with scanning. If you're not scanning your drawing in the computer, this is where you will begin. Simple little straight lines. Uh, the gray thing in the middle isn't really there. It's something that happens when you use a 35 millimeter camera on a screen. Uh, a simple little drawing of a corner of uh, a table top and a leg and some little embellishment in the corner. Um, one of the things that it helps with a computer, I mean, I think the big thing about drawing and drafting, you can't draw any faster with a computer, but you sure can redraw and change things. And it's in that area, just as with a word processor, making the changes that really helps. So I do three of these little um, items here, each one smaller, to make a design. And then I just pulled this one out of it. I cloned it that fast, just as you see it there. Um, I flipped it over. I stretched it to make it longer, just simply by dragging on it with the mouse and, and the little pointer. And then you can move it up in the corner there and see how it looks in different sizes. And that's the main way I use this. I am not a full-blown CAD user. I play with this machine to try out different ideas and do it very quickly. When you print it out, you've got a lot of choices. This little box right up here is just like the size or, uh, reduction or enlargement on your Xerox. You can get any size you want out of the thing. You can put it in there straight or sideways. Uh, the way you work with a Macintosh is pulling down menus. Like when I did this file, uh, the, the, rather the print instruction, I got all these choices here. You can check the boxes. You can push on radio buttons like this letter was selected but legal could be or an envelope. You get all done, you say OK, and it does it. You don't know what decisions to make, though. The machine is already set up with, with what they call default ones. It'll already do it a way that's probably pretty good. That's great for the learning curve. Later on, you can tell it what you want to do, but it knows things to do by itself. Manipulating and, uh, and drawing on a computer from scratch without scanning. A simple little image and all these little boxes around the control points where you can do things. So let's just grab a hold of, of this little part right now and really stretch this curve out. Bingo! You can, even, you can go on into the ridiculous. You can zoom in on the thing and actually do some real work. You can just modify this curve slightly. See the difference between these two? One's old, one's new. If I like it, I keep it. If I don't, I undo it. So you can, you can really do uh, fine detail work on this by zooming in on it and pushing these little handles. They're like seesaw levers. Once I get a bunch of things made, this one that you saw me making has now been duplicated. And it looks like rotations, and, but it's actually done with stretching. It's the same one. I didn't have to redraw it. I draw one of these, 
one of those, pull out the circle. This is about four minutes work so far. Put the, uh, uh, duplicate that uh, leg thing, flip it, stick this thing over here. Um, this one here came out of this one, it was just rotated. About this point, I'm ready to go build something. I don't very often make final presentation drawings, so that's not what I'm good at. Uh, this thing is a lamp to be made in iron, and there it is. Yes, Virginia, it really is a lamp that can turn it on. Yeah. It's a lot of heavy duty iron, but I couldn't make that thing just straight off the anvil in any amount of time like I can with the CAD. I think that's true whether you're working in wood or any other medium. That's the real advantage of this, is trying out ideas. Okay, I told you I told you I supported myself. This shelf is the computer books. These are the blacksmithing books, these are the art books, there's the fly library, these are company catalog. I've decided to take this route. It does not have to be this way. It's just my personality. I want to know what's going on. Uh, another really good thing for learning at the beginning is videos. This young man's telling me how I can take my computer apart and put more memory in it. I never did it. I never did anything like that before. I don't even have a soldering gun. Was it hard? No, not at all. I just took it apart, uh, yank a few cables out. You get This is the whole computer. There's all the memory chips. You just unclip them and clip some new ones in, put the thing back together again. This is it halfway together, and go back to work. All in aid, not forgetting of the product we're trying to put out. This is a very simple hand-forged iron table um, that I make. Hand-forged iron, when it's really real, you zoom in on it and you get some nice details. There's a character to the metal and to the forms, to the surface, that you don't get by painting over things. I haven't yet figured out how to show that on a computer. That's why I include slides as well. We'll leave you in the woods <laughs> as far as that's concerned. One other thing I think I wanted to say about computers, and it's not so much CAD. Anybody know how to uh, get one of these things loose? All right, it works differently. We'll worry about getting that out of there in a minute. Besides CAD, there's computers itself. Whether or not it's scary, whether you think you're going to spend all this money and you can't really do it, whether it's going to work for you, my best suggestion on that is to find a close friend, a colleague, a sympathetic person, outside of business hours, in a home if possible. So we're trying to make this easy. This, and you sit down at the computer, not him or her. Have them at your elbow. You sit down, you try it for a half an hour or an hour and see what that feels like. And do that with more than one kind of computer. I'm going to indicate my prejudice here without trying to get into the platform wars. Do it with a Macintosh as well as an IBM and see what they both feel like for you. My real belief on the choice between those two kinds of computers is that what fits with your personality is right. There is not one best kind. Thanks. Maybe we're going to have a break when we get off the slide here. Uh, let me ask this. Do, would you folks like to have a break now or uh, uh, after another speaker? Or how, what, what's the preference? Keep, keep on going. going. Okay. Found it. Found it. Yay. Luck's rolling. Our luck is right. Our, our, our next speaker, Buddy Grows. Uh, Buddy has an MFA from the University of North Carolina, Greensburg. He's been a furniture designer for 20 years. Uh, with, with experience in bedroom case goods and occasional. He spent five years with Bassett as a stamp designer and 11 years uh, with, with Lane. While at Lane, he worked on CAD for two years. Uh, he's been a freelance designer for the last couple of years. And like Ardo, he also has a graphic design practice. Buddy Gross. Oh, uh, uh, Buddy's in Bay Manette, Alabama. Sorry. Good afternoon. Uh, we're going from the esoteric to the, uh, I don't really know what to call it, but my business is, uh, from a can down and dirty. My, my design business is down and dirty. I work at the very bottom on promotional bedroom and occasional uh, spectrum of furniture. Uh, how I got from Wayne Company to this type of design, I'll never know that it happened. Uh, it's, uh, I primarily work with promotional bedroom and occasional table manufacturers. Uh, they're small companies, 30 to $50 million worth of volume. 
uh, up to this point. They're not used to working with designers. Uh, it's an interesting relationship. Uh, they uh, have fairly up-to-date facilities, although they're small. Uh, they have never seen a detailed drawing. Uh, I work with them with eighth-inch scale drawings, loose perspectives, uh, full-size patterns for routers or uh, shape of work that has to be done. And if I do a detail at all, it is very, very basic. Uh, the, the least lines for these people, the better off they are. Uh, I got into CAD because most of the people, I'll be honest with you, we talked this before uh, before we came here today with a little luncheon. Be honest with you, I got into CAD because I love computers. All those are computer junkies. Uh, in, a certain, in a certain sense, I'm using uh, the ends to justify the means. I want a computer and I want to design with it. But I also think it's beneficial to furniture designers, uh, and especially in my case. Most of my clients have numerically controlled equipment, and to some degree we're using CAD programs to a limited extent already. I felt like it would be to my benefit to be able to present them with drawings in a format that integrated into their system that would easily translate from a floppy diskette from a computer into their CAD system and into their numerically controlled equipment. I felt like that would give me a competitive advantage over some other designers. And there's also no translation. What you give them is what you get. Uh, there's not a lot of flex factors when they get to manipulate drawings after you send it to them. It still can be manipulated, but you have a lot more control over the end product through a CAD system. Uh, also, promotional furniture, because of its highly standardized construction, lends itself to CAD. Once you get some basic case good constructions in the computer, well, all we do is change the faces, change the fronts, uh, give them a new headboard and mirror. But the basic uh, chest and uh, uh, dressers and dice stands are all pretty basic. You put that in the CAD, then you just throw a new front on it. Uh, you do have some design latitude, but not nearly as much as you do in the middle price points and the higher price points. Uh, the system that I spec'd out, I spec'd out myself. Now, I have had some CAD experience at the Lane Company on a mainframe system, and I have had some experience on a different kind of personal computer not related with furniture design. Uh, I read magazines, I talked to people who were familiar with computer systems, uh, talked to other people who had worked on different kind of CAD systems, not necessarily furniture, and basically I had a bottom line of a certain number of dollars that I had to spend, and I bought as much system as I could for the money. I would have liked to have bought more system, but there, there, there comes a point in time. You can spend as, almost as little or as much as you want to spend, but there is an optimum point in there somewhere, uh, the most system for the money. Uh, and you've also got choices of where you buy these systems, and to me that is a lot, has a lot to do with, with how comfortable you feel with the situation. Uh, you have what I call the high buck brand names, IBMs, uh, uh, where you can go and buy the systems, it costs a lot of money and you usually get a very high level of technical support uh, from those companies. Uh, there's a second level of uh, brand recognition and machines, uh, a little bit less expensive and also you still get a, a fairly good uh, high level of support. Then uh, you can go in and, and buy a computer almost anywhere. If you feel real comfortable with, with dealing with computers and setting it up and learning how to run one by yourself, you can buy a computer anywhere. Uh, and you can buy a good computer anywhere. Uh, in that case, there's little or no support. I mean, if you walk into a, a service merchandise or a Radio Shack or, or some of these places, I mean, you, you're going to buy a system, you're going to walk out with it, and it's yours, and you've got to deal with it. Uh, you can buy a mail order. Uh, there are any number of, of uh, companies that sell very, very fine computer systems through the mails at very, very attractive prices. In fact, that is probably your least expensive way to get into a computer system. There's no local support, but their telephone support is very good. Uh, and what I did, uh, I found, uh, I live in South Alabama, and uh, I live near Mobile, and I found a man uh, who has a business, and he builds generic, no-name brand equipment. You tell him what you want, how you want it configured, uh, he goes out and gets the components, puts the thing together. Uh, that is the least expensive way to buy something locally and still get some kind of support. Uh, there's also other other areas of support. Uh, there are third party consultants that will come in. Uh, you may know somebody uh, who's familiar with computers. But I chose the, the local generic route. I don't have a name on my computer. Uh, it works as good as any other computer I've seen. And I spent a lot less bucks than a lot of people did for uh, the same kind of system. 
Now, in my particular system, and I'll, I'm going to try to stay away from a lot of technical terms and, and things that you don't understand. Uh, some things that I do say that you don't. I have a copy of this right here that, that, that you may have after the presentation. Uh, you, can't, you can't talk about computers without touching on some uh, computer-specific things. But basically, my system that I bought a year ago, November of 1990, uh, is a three is an IBM base system. It's not an IBM brand system, but it's based on the IBM operating system. Uh, computers are designated by their computer chip, the internal mechanism that runs it, and a clock speed, how fast it runs. Uh, mine is a 386DX, 25 megahertz, uh, with a math coprocessor. And this is what Art was talking about, uh, about you call it accelerator board. It's an additional piece of equipment that speeds up the math processing and CAD drawings are mathematical computations where most computer operations are, especially uh, CAD drawings. You've got to have it uh, or you're going to sit there like Arco says for everyone wait for your screen to come back up. Uh, I won't go into the rest of the configuration of my system that's in here, but basically that is, originally there were AT and XT computers. Uh, 8088 chip based machines, and there was 286 computers, and there's 386 computers, and now there's 486, and you're ready to go to 586. Their clock speeds 20, 25, 33, 50 megahertz. Each one of those is faster than another one, and each one of those costs more than another one. So when you start dealing with computers, you've got to look how much money you want to spend and how much speed you can afford. And what Arto says is exactly true speed is essentially in CAD by as much speed as you can afford. Uh, but my basic computer system was $3,000. Uh, a monitor which is 14 inch color, super VGA, non interlaced high resolution, $750. The video card to drive it was $250. So my basic system was $4,000, not including CAD software. Uh, go with the biggest monitor, the best monitor that you can afford, because that's where you're working at, that's your drawing board. Don't script money on a monitor. Uh, I've got a 14 inch color now, I'm getting ready to go up to a 16. I'd like to be able to afford a 19 or a 20. But spend your money on your monitor with a good video card to drive it and a high resolution monitor. Uh, this same system right now, well, that was $4,000 for my basic system. The same system from a, a mail order company called Gateway 2000, which is a very reputable company, can be had for $2,600. So it's $1,400 less than I paid for it a year ago. Uh, additional things that I added to the basic system was a pen plotter, which makes a, a small ink drawing that was $1,400. Uh, the digitizer that other people have talked about, which is a small hand scanner, was $350. I have an internal modem. It is not a fax modem because I have a fax machine, but it is an internal modem. That is for communicating through the telephone lines via computer with another computer. I can do a drawing on my computer and send it to one of my client's computer over the telephone line just like you make a phone call, which we do often. We flop drawings back and forth just like you send faxes back and forth. I do a drawing, send it to them, they look at it on their computer, make suggestion changes, send it back to me. We do that all day long. Instead of UPS, even the best next day service, you spend several days doing it. We do it in just a matter of minutes. Uh, I bought a dot matrix printer. This is basically for output of correspondence. Uh, Input device is a Microsoft mouse. I also use a digitizing board with a pen stylus. It's a, a, a electronically activated board with a menu system on it where I pick a drawing program, uh, pick a drawing function. Uh, if I want the CAD program to draw a line, I pick draw a line from the menu and then draw a line on the screen. It's just a, there's different ways you can input into the computer. You can do it with the keyboard, you can do it with the mouse, you can do it with the digitizing board. It just depends on, on what you want to do and how you feel most comfortable with. I also believe in a tape backup system to save your data. You've got drawings stored on the computer or inside the computer. If something happens, you lose it, it's all gone. So I invested in a, in a what they call a tape backup system. It takes what's in the computer and stores it on something else out of the computer that is safe. Uh, the system I bought was nowhere near expensive as Arco's. It's $300 and backs up a 120 meg hard drive in about 40 minutes. So everything I've got on a hard drive, I can make a copy of in 40 minutes. Uh, all in all, I've got, without software, about $7,000 in my system. Uh, the same system now, uh, and uh, I said a basic system, 
computer and a monitor and a plotter. That's what I consider a basic system because you've got the computer to design on, the monitor, of course, is your drawing board. You have to have some, some method of getting that drawing out of the computer onto a piece of paper. And so for a basic system, which is computer, monitor, and plotter, uh, you're about $5,000 now with today's prices. Uh, and the same total package that I've got with today's prices is less than $6,000. Now, you throw in software. Uh, as Art said, there's, there's all kind of miscellaneous software, depending on what you want to do with a computer. You can do word processing, you can do spreadsheets, you can do money management, you can play games. I mean, there's no, no ends of what you can do on a computer. Every time you buy a computer program for something else besides CAD, you're going to drop between $100 and $400. Uh, computer software programs are not inexpensive. They're very powerful uh, pieces, uh, pieces of software, though. Uh, on CAD software, he talked about Bursa CAD. I chose AutoCAD. AutoCAD, where I'm at, is a de facto standard. Everybody down there uses AutoCAD, so I use AutoCAD because there's no conflict with what I do integrated with their system. It's just automatic transfer. If you go to a VersaCAD or some other CAD program, it can be done. In most cases, it can be done easily, even transferring from Mac to IBM type systems. There are transfers available. This is a direct transfer. I'm using the same software they're using, and it just, it's, it's easier for me. But there are software programs out there that cost $1,000. There are programs out there that cost less than $300. Uh, AutoCAD is expensive. Uh, version 11, I mean version 10 is $2,500, and the latest release is over $3,000. Uh, it's a very sophisticated, very powerful program. But there are some other, there are some $1,000 programs, some $300 programs that, that might do the same thing almost. I've looked at some of these, and they're, they're very, very good. Uh, so basically, with the software at, at $2,500 for AutoCAD version 10, I've got a little bit less than $10,000 in my system at a year ago's price. Uh, that same system on today's prices would be about $8,500, including the, the $2,500 to $3,000 for AutoCAD. So the prices on this stuff has, has, has just really substantially dropped over the years. Uh, and, and drops every day. Uh, if you go with a less expensive system than AutoCAD, uh, you can drop the price of your system down considerably. Uh, an alternative is leasing to own. I mean, if you're not sure you want to get into computers and you're not sure that you want to get into CAD systems, uh, lease your computer with the option to own. Uh, buy an inexpensive CAD system, play with it, see how you like it, and then if you feel like it's going to be for you, then you can go ahead and spend the bucks on a big CAD system. And, and, you know, on maybe even upgrading uh, the computer system that you, you have. Uh, I won't go into it uh, lack of time, but in this little presentation, which uh, you can't have a copy of, I have some notes on different kinds of printers, different kinds of monitors, different kinds of plotters, different kinds of processors, just a lot of things just to make you generally aware of some of the things that are out there and what some of the options are. Uh, when I bought my system, the dealer that I bought it from completely configured it. I told him what I wanted. Uh, he bought the stuff, he put it together, and when I got it, it worked. Uh, since then, I've added some things myself. It's, it's not as intimidating as it sounds. It's not particularly easy, but it's not particularly hard. Uh, you can also buy things from that same dealer to add on later, and if you do that, in most cases, he will install them and set them up as part of the price. Uh, so you, there's all kind of routes you can go as far as upgrading your system and adding components to the system. You don't have to buy a complete system right off the bat. I, I didn't buy everything at one time. I added it as I went along. Uh, there's something you can do yourself. Uh, as was mentioned, my CAD skills basically came from when I was at the Lane Company. They have a mainframe standalone CAD system, and I was introduced to CAD there. I also had a, a personal computer at home for use not doing CAD for about five years, so I was somewhat computer literate and somewhat CAD literate. But you're still going to have to do three things if you get into a CAD system whether it's a Macintosh system or an IBM-based system or whatever it is, you're going to have to learn to run a computer, and that takes a little bit of doing. You're also going to have to learn to run a CAD software program, which takes some doing. Uh, and any additional software packages you buy, you have to learn to run those. Uh, you also have to learn to draw with CAD, which is different from learning how to run CAD. There is a certain mentality and a certain thought frame that you have to develop to run CAD efficiently. It's kind of like playing chess. You've got to stay about five moves ahead of yourself. But it's something that can be done. Uh, and there are, there are seminars available. 
There's private instruction available for most major software packages, and all CAD does have seminars that support it. There are other ways than, other than being self-taught that you can get into a CAD system. Uh, this wasn't asked, but something I want to throw in. Basically, the pros of the system and the advantage for me is you never have to draw the same thing twice. I hate that. That drives me nuts. Uh, you, you draw it once on a CAD system, I don't care how many times you change. The changes are very easy. You got a dress in there, and, and the guy you're working for says, hey, I want this thing two inches wider. You go into the CAD system, you put a stretch function on it, you make it two inches wider, you plot it out, and you're done. Uh, it just, I, I hate repetitive work. Uh, and it eliminates all of that. Uh, it's, it's very accurate. The time required to put the drawings into a CAD system, for me, is about twice as long as it is to do it by hand. And at first I thought that was a return. Uh, it, it, it's not the most efficient way of doing something, I'll be honest with you. But when it comes to changes, or redoing things, or modifying things, or reproducing extremely complicated drawings, or even simple drawings for that matter, the time you save is, is immeasurable. It is, that, that's what's worth it to me. Uh, and I use, uh, like I said, the companies I work for, I don't use a lot of detailed drawings. Uh, but basically, I put, a, I, put the, I put the drawing into the CAD system. I plot it out at an eighth inch scale and use it for my sketches. I plot out a, a, the sketch, I, I add a little bit, because stuff like uh, embossings and ornate hardware and, 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 and uh, uh, carvings and things like that is not something you do in CAD. They're very time intensive and very memory hungry. So you didn't basically outline the cases in as much detail as you can. I plot it out. I add the other details I need to and do my color renderings and, and, and make presentation sketches on that. But that is in effect a, a, the beginning of a detailed drawing that is in that CAD. If I use a full size plotter to draw it out just like we build a detailed drawing, it's still in there. The sketch and the detail and everything is all one and the same. Uh, the cons of the system, uh, I talked about a little bit, is it takes more time consuming to get it in with a pencil or paper. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to main, maintain proficiency on the system because the nature of my work anyway, I, I work during this time period and another time period I don't work. And when you're not working, you're not on a computer. And the learning curve is, and I'll be honest with you, steep. I'm not going to soft sell this thing and make it sound too glamorous and too easy because it is going to take some effort. But the effort is worth it. Uh, so basically, uh, I enjoy working on the CAD and it's been beneficial to me in the way that I work. And I can see where it also would be beneficial in some other ways. Going on this? Yeah. I hear nods. Good. Uh, our last speaker, uh, Calvin Eggleston, studied CAD uh, at, at Guilford College and, and was in the CAD and technology program. He's presently pursuing his BFA at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro. Uh, Calvin was, uh, was previously with American at Martinsville for eight years, and the last five years has been with Norman Heckler Design. Uh, with that, uh, I'll introduce. It's too cold or too hot? It's rather warm. It's rather warm. Okay. This is not very user friendly. Don't, don't worry about it. I don't think this is. Uh, I don't think it's that close. While Calvin's getting us, would anyone like to take some refreshments? Speak to each and every one of you on CAD Down and Dirty. My scope or extent of furniture designs involve mid to upper end clientele. These clientele expect very delicate designs range from many different styles, from the simplest of the contemporary to the much more uh, intricate or elaborate French design. As far as the introduction, the designs of the United States is a choice of system capabilities, depending on the complexity of the design or model to be displayed. The more complex the model, the more expensive and capable the system must be to manipulate it. 
Even today, wireframe is the only option for displaying some of your larger assemblies with enough memory and performance to manipulate it effectively on the display monitor. So where is the problem? At least part of the problem is that many designers still do not use CAD early enough in the conceptualization process. Pencil and paper is still the preferred means of sketching a rough design. A solution of this is not likely to arrive until a CAD software or any other software uh, gets better at meeting the needs of the designers and the analysis software gets sufficiently advanced to become almost completely hidden from the designer. Unfortunately, integration is easier to say than to implement. Understanding what CAD can do for you and myself as the designers. Many of us has a vague or uncertain idea of what AutoCAD can do for our uh, design work. We think it will make our drafting go faster, but we're not sure how exactly how, how this does. Uh, we, make, we also uh, believe they will produce better quality drawings. Some people believe that it will make them better designers. Professionally quality drawings without having much drawing talent. All these things are true to an extent. A CAD system is not creative. It's only as creative as the person that is input, the commands, or the one that's running the CAD system. But it can affect, I mean, it can assist the individual into being more productive. The creation of the drawing will continue to be a prime importance. CAD simply provides the means for replacing the technique in the preparation of a drawing to save time. Let me reiterate that. CAD simply provides the means for replacing the technique in the preparation for a drawing to save time. Learning AutoCAD can be very time consuming. If you are the one who is to operate the CAD system, at first you won't be as productive as you were when you were doing it all manually. Nor can you perform miracles overnight. Once you have a good working knowledge of the program, you still have to integrate it into your day-by-day -day working knowledge. It would take a month or uh, probably two months to get to a point where you can enter drawings with the same prophecy depending on how much time you spend regularly and using the CAD system. Hopefully, the slide presentation will give you designs some more uh, uh, visual and concrete analysis on what the system turns out and its cost. Hira is a turnkey <coughs> CAD system. Uh, the display unit, CPU unit, which is computer processing unit, the keyboard, the mouse, and as a output device, it's a dot matrix printer. The display monitor, 99.9% .9 of computer time will involve looking at the display monitor. Drawings will be tedious, tedious, and more tedious. This depends on the complexity of the drawings. The recommendations for this is a very good dot pitch for excellent resolution. The resolution is the smallest space between two displays elements that permit the elements to be distinguished on the terminal. It indicates the clarity of the display and its is expressed in pixels or picture elements, such as the 1024 by 1024 or the 1024 by 768 
the higher the number, it usually gets the best of your the pitch quality, such as your lines, your circles, your arcs, and so on. Then we have the mouse. If you don't plan to use AutoCAD tablet template, or if you don't tend to trace drawings, your mouse is an excellent input device. <coughs> the new generation of mouse offers a higher resolution and a better feel to the hand. This translates to a quicker and easier drawing on AutoCAD. Often the a movement across the screen requires only a slight movement of the wrist. Then we have the printer. The dot matrix printer is the best choice of producing a quick check plot as long as your drawing isn't longer than 13 inches by 16 inches. It will do a reasonable job for printing your drawing, though it won't produce the best line quality. The printer's chief advantage is speed. A dot matrix printer can print any drawings in under 10 minutes, regardless of how complex it is. It's contrast to a plotter, which we'll uh, see later on through the slide presentation. <coughs> it can take an hour or more to, uh, particularly if you are drawing something that contains a lot of text uh, on a plotter than it does on a printer. Then you have your storage unit, which is your CPU unit. Uh, CPU is a uh, computer processing unit. This is the brains of the computer. This is where all your memory, is stored. Its capacity is measured in bytes as 7, uh, 12K or kilobytes or 40M as megabytes. Another good computer processing unit. Digitizing tablet. If you need to trace a sketch, drawing, carving, etc., you should consider a digitizing tablet. This uses a rectangular object with a pen-like stylus or a device called a hook with this, this device that resembles a mouse. This has a smooth surface on which to draw. The most popular is 11 inches by 11 inches, but it's available in sizes up to 60 inches by 70 inches. The tablets give a natural feel to the drawing with the computer because of the movement of the stylus or the hook. It is directly translated to the cursor movement. You plotter. This is why you should spare no expense. At this point, this is what your clientele, this is where uh, all this viewing will be from this object here. A plotter is a mechanical device used to draw a computer image on sheets of paper, vellum, or polyester film. Unlike a dot matrix printer, a plotter uses pens. Its drawers are co uh, composed of continuous lines rather than dots, and lines and are clearer and sharper than those used by most dot matrix printers. Plotter drawings range from 11 inches by 17 inches up to 30 inches by 42 inches. Again, I would say spare no expense in this calendar. Here I want to reiterate that a, of a very promotional piece. This system is uh, used to more of your real simplified shapes, your bull nose, your OG shapes or your arcs, just a straight line figures. I want to show something that was very simplified and then I want to give it something that was a little bit more delicate. Here it has a, a curio cabinet uh, which is, has a little bit more intricate uh, shapes. At this point I want to give it zoom in on part of the crown area of the curio in order to show some of the delicate shapes that or the different shapes you could use in your uh, library. The pictures are a little dense there. But what I did, I kind of zoomed in onto the crown mode to show that some of these shapes and variation of shapes can be used also. 
in this area in AutoCAD, it's um, using that release can, which is a pull down menu. It has, as far as the different viewpoints, you can, each one of those options that it tells you can give you a uh, clientele as a slide presentation. You can zoom in on each box to give you a any type of viewing area that you would like. If you want a front view, a top view, a bottom view, back view, any type of uh, view that you would like to be in those categories, you can zoom in on. This is your wireframe drawing. It's more of a 3D wireframe drawing. The lines here haven't been edited. I just want to give you a feeling of how the 3D aspect will come into play here. This is also in the three different views it's as I pull down one of the viewpoints where I could show it in, in three different areas. Now I want to zoom in on one of them to give it a more larger feel or larger scale. This rendering here was done on a dot matrix panel, but the, uh, the, the printout was done on a dot matrix panel. The rendering was a hand rendering, which I uh, just went ahead and rendered. But the lines and everything gave you enough visibility that you can render it as hand rendering and print it as a dot matrix Also, I want to bring out a little bit more specialty in AutoCAD. I didn't want to just stay with straight line drawings because if you stay with straight line drawings, I figured that you would say it doesn't take me no time to do line drawings. But if I went and gave something with maybe turn-ins or a little bit of curve lines to just to get the feel of some more advanced AutoCAD games that you can use with it. This, right, this here is illustrating a little bit of zooming in on different areas of the uh, headboard uh, to give you a more visual effect. And this is another rendering of the bed after what's done. Like I said before, that the headboard was done on a printed out on a dot matrix printer, which is could be a very feasible output device. Uh, it depends on how you use it. You use this a lot because of metal quality and also because of the quickness. That plotting right there, will, uh, printing right there, would probably would have been about I don't know 30 seconds at the most. And to finalize it, AutoCAD also has a database in which you can uh, use it as to keep your time. As far as how much time that you have uh, created on the drawing, the day that you was on this drawing, the starting time of the drawing, and also the finish time. The system that you have just seen was pretty much a turnkey system the way I bought my system a year ago. The hardware that I bought was a CPU unit which had about 80 megs, a hard drive, a mouse, and a monitor, and a keyboard. This price was approximately $4,500. And then I went out and to uh, get a, a dot matrix printer, a digital board, and a plotter. As far as the hardware, the CPU unit, the monitor, the keyboard, and the mouse, we're looking at $4,500. You add a dot matrix printer, which is another $500, or a laser printer, which is starting around $1,500. You're looking at somewhere between five dollars and $6,000. Then there's a plotter. Again, like I said, this is where you should spare no expense in this category. Uh, the beginning plotter would be around $5,000 up to around $15,000. Uh, now you're looking at a price somewhere from $10,000 to $21,000. And then there's your software to finish up on your CAD system. Standard software, uh, for me, since I was a college student, so I could receive around $475 for release 10 and $875 for release 11. But for someone that wasn't a college student, uh, the software would range from $3,000 to $3,500. The system at that point in time would cost around $13,000 up to around $24,000. Again, I hope that you all got something out of a slide presentation that gives you a little effect of what CAD can do and what a jury can do for each and every one of you. Thank you.
get somebody to help uh, auto run the video camera so you can come up here and answer questions or? Sure, we'll just leave it on. We'll just leave it there. And, uh, Carl, I'd like to make one more point. I'm sorry? I'd like to make one more point. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, one of the most expensive parts of the system that's been brought out is your full-size plotter. In my case, in some other cases, you don't require that. In y'all's cases, you might. And you can spend $4,000 and up on a full-size plotter. But there are other options for full-size output. Uh, there are services in most major metropolitan areas that you can take a file on disk and take to them and have them plot it out for you. So you don't necessarily, even though your business requires a full-size drawing, you don't necessarily have to put out the $4,000 to $10,000 that a plotter is going to cost. So there are some ways to get around some of these initial startup costs, costs in, the, in the beginning. Uh, I, I, that's exactly what I was going to say, and I'm glad you said it. Uh, they range in cost from, I guess, what, around a couple of bucks a square foot. So that, that means that if, uh, if, if your practice most of the time requires, let's say, something small enough to fit on 8.5 by 11, but occasionally you do need a full-size plot, you don't have to go out and buy one, use it infrequently, you can just send that out to get plotted. The services are very good, they're efficient, they're quick, and they're reasonably cheap. You do it as you need it, depending on your, your own needs. Uh, with that, one, uh, one note I'd yeah. add to that is it does not matter where you live. That's one of the great things about America. I said I lived at the end of the road. With a wire, with a telephone, or with FedEx, you can either transmit the stuff electronically or take, have, send a disk from the mountains of western North Carolina. And I could use his service in Palo Alto, California. Zip, zip, and it's done. So it, don't worry about where you live or finding the things. You can just, it's as easy as a telephone. Well, I would like to add just one other thing, too. Let your client pay for it, basically. Hey, hey. Um, <laughs> you're here. <laughs> yeah. Let them uh, have a similar system, whether it's a Mac system or a DOS system. Uh, it would be very advantageous. And as long as they have a plotter or a computer, don't even print out anything. Just send it to them through the modem, as uh, Paul says, and they will ha handle it. Why should you bother with it? It's a very you good know? point. And more and more of your clients are getting it, as you probably all know. Okay, with that, questions you can either direct it to me and I'll go to them or direct, direct it to them. Is there any maximum size or minimum size? I draw details of a 10 foot long as you do. Is that any problem? I use wider than 36 inch paper. No, there are plotters uh, up to 42 inch width. Camera and leg. Any leg. French anyway. legs with elaborate carving. All you can do is profile, basically, outline, and then you have to do your carving. Mm -hmm. Simplest way. Ah, uh, you have a leg, French leg, mm -hmm. Louis the 16, 15. All right, you've got the carving, the little scrolls and so forth. The computer limitations are not allowed there, right? All you can do is a profile. No, you can do as much detailing as you want. Yeah. But the carving would have to be individual each time, so it would be no use in having it in the frame of a computer. Sure it would. Because if the carving, my guess is the carvings you use from time to time. They reduce, enlarge, Well, yeah, or, or just modify it. And once yeah. you have the basic one in, as several of our speakers have pointed out, modification is where CAD really stands out. The first time is longer, but after that it's quicker. Let me ask a question out of uh, no knowledge whatsoever about the computer. This gentleman was talking about drawing a CAD in a Take a picture of a carving, get it out of a magazine or whatever you like. Can you take that picture and scan it? If you're talking about a scanner, sure. and then have that. I assume when you scan it, it goes into some kind of memory, mm -hmm. and then get pull it out of memory and put it on that drawing. Yeah, that, yeah. Yes, sure. It, it can be done, but like I say, I don't want to soft sell any of this. It just takes a lot. Of, it takes some, time. sometimes it takes some doing. Some things are easily done than others, but it, yes, it can be done. What's he doing? Apparently. I just saw a picture to scan it, you take a thing and go over it. Okay, that's scanned. That gets it into your system. What's the time get it in? You know, have the system on the drawing? Yeah, let, let me say this. The problem with that, the scan thing doesn't have any intelligence to it. It's just a scan. Just like me. No. It's a bitmap <laughs> bit file. What you're already saying is can you have what's it going to take to get it scanned in a way that you can modify it, play with it, stretch it, enlarge it, uh, change the detailing on the thing. 
There are services which will take scan drawings and convert them into what's called vector files with intelligence. In other words, to do that. Some, it depends on, the, on how complicated, depends on how good a drawing you have, or how good a scan you have. That is, if you have a very sharp drawing, it, your work is a lot easier. There's a software program called Hijack that will do that too. That's right. That's right. They're, they're, they're getting better all the time, is what I can say. They're talking the same thing. We want the damn thing to speed up. As far as the drawing, I don't need it for my drawing. I can handle that. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking for a quicker way to do it. You know, these details can get pretty darn involved and elongated. But I need to find a way that I can do it quick. I want to turn out 120 drawings a market instead of 65. That sounds good. Instead of 65. If they all similar, but with differences. Oh, no, no, not similar. I hear things of mass variation. See, if I was doing case goods, basic case goods, such as you're doing where you've got the box. All you're doing is change the, uh, the carcasses there, you're just changing the front. That's wonderful, but I don't, it, I don't do that, you know, I wish I, I, wish I had to do a fair account like that. The, you know, my, my comment stands, the initial input into a computer is slower than pen and pencil. Now, once you get it in there and build up a database, yeah. and depending on what your particular situation is, modifications are faster, re, uh, changes are faster, reproductions faster, uh, if you had to duplicate a detail for somebody, it would take you a hell of a lot longer time to do it manually than you could do it off the CAD system. Okay. But you're not, and I, I, uh, they may disagree or, or agree, I don't think that your initial input and your first time operation on the CAD is, is in generally going to speed up your operation. I'm confused when you say duplication. We have a drawing and my clients have 95 copies. I just take it to our machine already make yeah. five copies. What do you mean by duplication? Uh, you mean modi a theme with lots of variations on it. Yeah. They change it on each side. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, have, yeah. You, have, you have access to it. Well, how do you duplicate a copy of detail that's 10 foot long? The, you, it comes out of your printer. You just replot it or reprint it. I mean, it's in your memory. I mean, you just can. redo it. Well, you can, you can do it on... on from the, in right the right same way you can do it it's done by hand. That's the, yeah. yeah. The, we, this do, the word duplication we're using kind of loosely. If you mean you want a lot of copies, that's the same way. Basically, uh, when you plot out your drawing, whether it's a pencil or ink, you will get an original. Let's consider it that way. And you use that to make your blueprints. Or you send the original to the factory, you keep the original in your computer, and let them use that, and they can make as many copies as they want to. Well, if you took the, the Chippendale books and mm -hmm. Applewhite and mm -hmm. all the period furniture, and all your research was put down and ran through the scanner, and the, the information that was involved would be the asset mainly before, because you can pull it up quickly, rather than go into the... Exactly right. Yeah, so Mike, but I'm going to say that... Oh, I won't say this. Some things are not best suited for a computer. Now, when you start scanning images and doing file transfers and bringing them into AutoCAD, you generate, especially with, with, with a lot of drawings that's got curves on it, you wind up generating some drawing files that are tremendously huge. I mean, I scanned a piece of hardware from the Kilo Brass catalog to bring it into AutoCAD to put on a piece of furniture. And the scanned image occupied more of one piece of hardware, yeah. occupied more disk space more capacity in that computer than the whole bedroom suit did. <coughs> so when you get into cabriole legs and things you're talking about, yes, it can be scanned, yes, it can be tra uh, transferred from format to format and everything you're saying, but it may not be the best way to do it. Uh, but let me say this. I, this alludes to what was said by Jose Asasi said at our last, uh, our last seminar in April. The problem with our industry is it's too small. And if somebody did that once, Okay, under you know they did it under very special conditions. They could do it by scanning or however in a way that they took that Chippendale book and they gave accurate drawings of everything there that could be changed and all that. That wouldn't be a very hard thing to do, but you'd have to pay for that. So, so essentially, it, it's not going to be. It's not as easy as buying a Dover book. It's going to cost more than that. So someday someone will when enough people use CAD. And, and that's one of the problems. Yeah. In the furniture industry, computers and CAD, even on manufacturing end, especially on design end, is, is in its infancy. That's right. And there's a lot of 
in other industries, there's been a lot of third-party utility software that has been developed to accomplish things like you're talking about that this part of the industry just hasn't progressed to yet, and it's going to be a long time for the wheel. Well, even even lower than that, I mean, for example, American Standard has a lot of their plumbing fixtures, bathroom fixtures, on computer in AutoCAD format. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means you'll never have to draw if you're an architect. You'll never have to draw plumbing fixtures again. They're all there. But it's because it's a big enough company, there's enough users out there, they can sell it, they can make some money from it. There's no such thing. I mean, Otten's products couldn't make, make enough money by doing that, for example, yeah, okay. right now in the furniture industry. We're too small. We say, well, can I get just this? Can I get just that? I just got a little thing to do. You know, that, that, okay, that's, 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 that's essentially. Yes. How do I like drawing on such a small screen? I don't, and I'm getting a bigger screen this winter. When you're trying to scale uh, something out, don't you have to have a full size? What do you uh, What you do instead is what they call zoom and pan. You zoom in to make, it's like a magnifying glass. You can go two times, four times, eight times bigger, or zoom out, then you can see the whole drawing, but your whole 10 feet is still within your screen what's, size. What's the largest screen that you can? 19-inch color television is, the, is an equivalent size. Yeah. That's a big difference in looking at oh, you uh, bet. Huh. Yeah. You they, bet. They're, they're, all, they're all 35 inch screens, but they're very expensive. But yeah. the best they're, they're very, I mean, they're, they're... But let me add to that. Once you go up, you need more memory. You have to buy uh, extra color boards, but it's all par for the course. I mean, if you uh, want better product, you have to pay for it. Yeah. To, to me, uh, coming from doing a certain kind of pressure what I'm doing now, I'm working on a full-size drawing board. The screen was a problem. I mean, you got a 14-inch monitor, you got a 16, you got a 19 and 20. Okay, I beat it. It's still a problem. It's not a full-size drawing board. And I had a hard time dealing with that uh, because even with high-resolution monitors, the lines are jagged and, and they're not smooth and, and you go nuts. Uh, I work it two ways. I do a lot of check plots. I draw something on the screen. I run a quick plot uh, to see what it looks like. Uh, if it's something that's a real complicated curve, I'll sketch it out first on a piece of paper, grid it off, and then put it in the CAD. Is uh, there a possibility to scan a detail and put it in your computer? Yes. yes. There is software that, that works yeah. with your with your plotters. Once again, you've got to start with the plotter. If you're talking about full-size detail drawing, you've got to have a full-size plotter. There is a, a scanner that will allow you to scan an existing drawing and bring it into the system. There are also services which will do that for you. You can, I mean, they're reasonably cheap. But, like with anything, it costs a little bit, and it takes some care. It's not just pushing buttons. Calvin, you had a comment. What I was telling them about the monitor, the monitor that I have shown was a 14-inch monitor. For me, that's, like I said, it's a very small monitor, and I guess I should use the word tease. It's very teased by sitting back, back and forth, looking at the screen. Yeah, but yeah, as yeah. far as you need, you need something with a very good dot pitch. Dot pitch will give you a good resolution on the screen, and also to help you as far as that. What's, what's the advantage of drawing your detail on the small screen to scanning a detail that's just done, and you can make the changes in the computer, right? That's right. Oh, I'd scan everything I could, as long as I could get it in there in a, in a usable form. You bet. <laughs> and the things that you don't want when you're scanning it, uh, AutoCAD has a modern uh, command that you can kind of pull it away from the drawing. For instance, when you scan something, it's going to pick up all the debris and everything that you have on the drawing. But also AutoCAD has a uh, modern device which can remove the part of the drawing that you want, put it over here, and you can erase or uh, uh, edit all the other. So, well, I don't want to give anybody the impression that any of this is magic and any of it is, is easy. It, it takes some doing. All, yes, things can be done, and whether it's up to you from a cost standpoint and from a time standpoint of whether it is worth it or not. That's the decision that everybody's going to have to make. Uh, just one other thing before you ask the questions. For example, I've been using AutoCAD for six years now, and I have a, my own library of Otten's on metal molding products. So when I say it's Otten's 3306, I look, and oh, I got that one. And if I don't, I scan it in. They're not super accurate, but then again, I'm not making them. All I have to do is do it so that it's credible, and it looks like a good rendering yeah. on an elevation. It doesn't have to be. It's not brain surgery. <laughs> Maybe that's the best way of putting it. <laughs> so that, that's a uh, yeah. question. Uh, when you, you were showing some drawings on the Material cap of the cabinet. Yes. Can you take that line drawing and do your details of the base and the crown molding and the door frame molding and then dump that onto a plotter and have a full size elevation drawing? 
that. Can you then go back on that elevation drawing if you don't want to take the time? And then you can add, by hand, you can add your cross sections or your <coughs> detail parts in there by hand to, to add more clarity to right, it. Right, so. Is that easy? Is that what you do? Very easy. From you can, from yeah. flying drawing? Yes, yes. Well, I, I, put as much, I put as much geometric. CAD systems are very good when it comes to geometric things, circles, arcs, lines, segments, straight lines, squares, uh, because it's mathematical computation. I do as much geometric detail on my drawing as I can, plot it out, and then the fruit fruit stuff I do freehand. Mm -hmm. yeah. To follow up on, on Jack's question, Calvin, uh, I know Norman Hepburn's office, and I know the work that comes out of the office. How does the CAD system help, you could have all of it to ask the question, help your office in relationship to your client base? Uh, our clientele, uh, very few of our clientele is on CAD system. And we kind of have to cater our uh, clientele to integrate our CAD system with the clientele. For instance, that uh, most of our clientele, as far as engineering, that's the main process that we kind of works with our clientele in. We work with them a lot in the engineering process. As far as designing, as far as designing on CAD, that is mostly for our instead of our clientele, but most of it is catering and engineering as far as changes. So you use it like a quick design tool if you see something, you sketched up something you like and you want to make it longer or wider or proportionate. Exactly. You can do very quickly yeah. other than re-sketching it. Very nice. Well, when you say very quickly, again, uh, no, no, changes within the CAD system. Once it's down. Once right? it's in there. Okay. Yeah. Man, just like that. Uh, 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 Alan? I had a, a question, maybe all of you could comment on. Uh, I always uh, sketch in perspective, and I from, primarily do upholstery. Uh, how difficult is it to, to show things in perspective, and uh, how much more time consuming is it? And uh, when you want to make a change, uh, does it require a lot more time? Uh, I would like to say, uh, as far as perspective drawing, AutoCAD's call it's 2D drawing, there are perspective on it. Uh, the one that I showed up here was more of a 3D drawing. It gave you a little bit more depth. When I said 3D, it was gives you more depth and elevation. But they AutoCAD use more of a 2D uh, drawing and you give it distance just in order to give it a more perspective feel. It's been in my experience that 3D is more time consuming than 2D by say. a large factor. And then you also get into situations and limitations of the actual rendering of the product. And that's a, that's a very, very prevalent limitation within the CAD industry as it applies to furniture right now. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not using the 3D version. It's not made for us. Uh, it would take you forever to do a sketch. But then you have to render it. So as I said in my uh, little segment, that I consider the computer as a tool, and I use it mainly for detailing, and I also use it for presentation purposes. But as far as sketching 3D sketches, I don't have a need for it because I can do it much faster freehand. And you saw some of the work, you know, it's all done in uh, 3D line drawings. Once in a while I do it in the elevation, but that I can take out from the computer when I do my full size. I've got another approach to that. I don't do it in what they are calling 3D, and I don't even do it in a CAD program. I do it in a drawing or illustration program. We know that's a circle, but if I do that to it, it looks like an ellipse. If, for your purposes, you can do that, and now we're gonna tilt it another way, and I can get to somewhere here where it'll look like a circle again, just smaller, five to 10 seconds for a complicated upholstered piece of furniture when you just stretch the box it's in on a Macintosh. I don't know about the more complicated things. Um, but you can't then use that as an engineering drawing, just a visualization, same as a sketch. Uh, Alan, I wanted to say that any of you, I know Alan does upholstery, just as a comment, um, uh, there is a new CAD system which they're showing at the at the Radisson called Motocad. They're showing a few. This one I'm, I'm mentioning in particular because what it is is it's actually, they're using it as the, the, as you've seen written up, for the store showing the woman who's going to buy a piece of bolts and furniture what it looks like in many fabrics. However, there's a version you can buy. They're not demonstrating it there, but the guy was there from it, from Motocad. I think it's called Envision. It costs about 10 grand on a Macintosh. It's a very powerful tool 
what it will do is take, for example, let's say your existing client has a catalog photo. It will translate that to CAD. That means now you now can stretch it, put different fabrics on it, change the way the throw pillows are on the thing if you don't like it. So you can get that in much faster if you have a sketch or a good photograph to work from. Paul, go ahead. I've been looking at Envision since I found it okay. at, at, at Macworld, an exposition in Boston in, in August, and it fascinated me because when it wraps it around a corner, it looks right. I mean, you could take a plaid and put all the wrinkles in it in, in, in Mr. Waxman's coat there, and it looks real. reason this, they get some credibility here, they spent the last several years in the fashion industry, which is now coming to furniture, and they make dresses, coats, in pattern fabrics, drape, and fit around people like they really do. Uh, the Envision portion of this is 2,000, not 10,000. It's what they call texture mapping. So you can take a piece of the actual fabric, put it on your flatbed scanner, which is basically like Xeroxing it. It's now in the machine. You can draw an outline of what you want the fabric applied to it. Let me translate into seconds. I think less than 20 seconds. Your whole upholstered item is refabricated in the new fabric, and you can do it as many times as you want. You can do, use that partial, that $2,000 texture mapper as a design tool. The ten to even $30,000 tool is something at point of purchase, to, which they're using now. And I think there's a, fu uh, a future in that, too. The sample doesn't really need to even be built. You've got so many frames in the computer and so many fabrics, and if you want a new one, scan it in. They'll make catalog available, and then they're hooked up to the, they can be hooked up to the factory and kind of order this thing that never even existed. They're using a different purpose than we would. I mean, they're doing it to sell upholstered furniture. But the same thing that does that can be used to design. Questions? More questions? Let me add something to an earlier topic before. It was about the, uh, well, what I would like to suggest is that both in the AutoCAD and the VersaCAD systems, we have what we call the library. Uh, that's a separate little system. It's like a filing cabinet, basically. And I'm uh, filling up the library with all kinds of different elements, like hardware. I, I draw hardware uh, once, and I just put it in the library, and it's there. So next time I want to use it, all I have to do is click on it, open it, and place it on my drawing. Uh, I can put rosettes, or I can put segments of a molding, as a matter of fact, uh, all of the knives from uh, one of my accounts are in the library. Different knife patterns. So uh, all you have to do is take it out once, and you can use it on your drawings and just multiply. You know, it depends on how many times you use it. So those libraries are very, very, very handy. And if, if you have too many of them, just copy it, put it on a separate disk, keep it separately. And if you have to use that account's uh, library, just put it in the computer, take out what you want, and, and that's it. That's a very, very handy tool. The great time saving with CAD is cumulative. On the front end, there's nothing, matter of fact, that's a negative as far as I'm concerned. But the more you do, the more you put in there, the more you use it, the more you have to draw, the more libraries that you create, the more some of the things you've got, something you're doing now, uh, that's when you start saving time. But it's on the back end. It will not be on the front end. On a different topic, I'd like to kind of add what was we've all gone through, and most of you apparently have not, and that's the big leap from no computer to, to what we do every day. One of the things I found was that people who have computers, especially Macs, like to help each other free. We'll spend incredible amounts of time with you, either together with you or on the phone. There are user groups. And then where people aren't geographically close but have the same interest, they call it a special interest group. There could be a special interest group of furniture designers across this whole country who would kind of an informal network who would call each other up and help. Uh, I'm certainly available to, to help people with what I know and, and also tell them when I don't know and perhaps refer them. But I think networking without worrying about a big, cumbersome organization or stuff could be very helpful. Because this is pretty personal and it's a little scary. It was for me. So I, I really think that, that, that people help each other out in this area. And it's also true that, heck, why are we up here? I mean, we did this for a lunch. No, we didn't do that for a lunch. We did it because we just like to, like to help. 
and, and that's there, uh, no matter what it is. Um, maybe for a future one of these, if there's a future, I'd kind of like to poll the audience. Would somebody like to see a computer here being demonstrated? Hey, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do the other thing? Would you like to get your hands on it? We couldn't do the hands-on in a seminar. We could get the, a demo. Maybe somebody who has a design studio in High Point could offer theirs if they have a computer. Maybe somebody could bring a computer to a particular hotel room. I don't know. I just kind of feedback. Does anybody think they'd like to get hands-on for free? We might plan on that in the then future. I am bringing it in. Well, the problem with that is, yeah, it's just, if you bring in the vendors, you have to listen to all their BS. The idea is just to do it. This is just for furniture designers. We would humiliate if you had an yeah. individual do yeah. it, then you yeah. skip the commercial, and That's you also right. get what really pertains yeah. to you. One of the problems, if you go to the store, no matter how good a store it is, they don't know your problems in your yeah. industry like a colleague does. That's right. <laughs> what you want to be able to see is, let me see how you do a cabriole leg. That's what you want. I mean, you don't care about the commercial, how long you've been in business. Yeah. Sure. Alan? I, I had read that they're coming out with a new pen uh, oh, yes. computer or something. Yes. What does that mean? That means you don't have to type. Some people just don't like to type. It's not really a CAD thing. Can you draw with it? Yes, you can, but you can do that now. That's no big deal. Oh. But this is for, if you don't like, if you, if you want to write a letter, uh -huh. but you don't like to use a typewriter, you can just do block lettering or something, and it'll read your handwriting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very visionary. I read the yeah, same article yeah, you yeah, read, yeah. Uh, where they hide the computers behind the walls, yeah. and all you have to do is have a little pad and you write. And basically, it's uh, information is transmitted either uh, infrared or radio waves to your computer, and it will process whatever you're putting down. It's very visionary and a great idea. But uh, a few more years. Okay. They've done the same thing with spoken commands, voice activated. Yeah. Yeah, that's a way of selling more computers for people who don't like to type. They, they want to write letters, they don't want to the type. Printers, laser printer. What is a plus for that? Why is it plus? Color. Pardon me? The color. Why is it? Uh, why is it any different than basically well, the printer would? The, the, the resolution of the output. A dot matrix printer has a certain density of dots that makes up a character. It's low resolution. A laser printer has a high resolution of dots for a almost printed typeset output. Uh, for outputting drawings, it really doesn't make any difference because really the best thing to do an output drawing with is a small plotter. You can get a, I have an 11 by 17 plotter uh, does ink drawings for $1,100 for a paper packer. Mm. Uh, <coughs> but in my graphic design work, where I have to take something as a, a completed presentation or take something to a printer for reproduction, then you need the laser output. Well. Uh, let me add to that. Uh, there are different kinds of laser printers. Most laser printers you find in offices, they print 300 dots per square inch. That's what you see uh, on my uh, sketches. However, today there are laser printers printing 450, 600, and up to 1,200 dots per square inch. That is almost equal to uh, uh, photography quality. Uh, that great. That I can up. A, I mean, that means you can get a, a circle without all of those. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You can get that at 300. Dollars. I can take uh, my no. old, old, the very first laser printer, which I paid 4,000 bucks for it. Very expensive. I can buy a new board for it, which is also expensive. $2,400. No wait. Uh, that's an um, that's an upgrade deal. You take out the old one, put in the new one. However, what do I get? I would be able to print 600 dots per square inch. Uh, my printer, my old printer, would be 10 times as fast. And I can print half tones so beautifully. That's incredible. This is technology. I think the best answer to this is to look at print output. Actual things that certain printers printed. I brought along a bunch of that stuff. I know Arto did too. They didn't have time to pass all around. So when we come to that part of the program where people are putting around, let's let's put some stuff out on the table, look at it. I've got some that's labeled here, Very including yeah. stuff that I faxed. Two ways to fax. Print it out and stuff it through your standalone fax yeah. machine. Or what I also do, a fax modem comes right out of, the, out, of the, out of the computer. What does that do for you? No matter what standalone fax machine receives it, the image is sharper. 
because it didn't have to go through the scanner of your standalone fax machine. We've got a bunch of that here labeled for people to pick through. Arno's got some stuff. Unless we have any more questions, I think we're at that point now. Let's let's do it. And just refreshments. I'd just like to thank the four Arno, Buddy, Calvin, and Paul. I think they did an excellent job. Now that's a scanned photo. And it's Good. a desk writer printer. How was it? Good. The, the $500 printer. Wait, wait, wait. And I, I messed with the photo, enhanced it, and this was a, the scan of the color photo, which is harder to do than a black and white photo. And then I faxed it. Uh, I, I put it through the fax machine. So you can see the degradation uh, at half tone and at standard. The difference that I did was I faxed That's something simple, straight out of the simple computer. Drawer, right? Fax loaded the fax machine. These are kind of labeled. No, no, these are scanned with that little hand scanner I showed you. Both of these are scanned with the $300 hand scanner. Both of these are scanned. That's a scanned color photo. This is a scanned black and white. What you can and then what you can do is you can trace this with the computer and then you can go stretch in like four seconds. It's stretched. You can turn them off as you go through. Remember that funny little scimitar shaped thing I had? That's why I think the next one we could get a real computer you're doing it. It would be more than that slide. That's possible. Oh, thank you. Now they have a translation Or with me, the only version that he uses it's a color version of this one right here. And this is sharp. That's a $500 printer. It's 1100 I copy it for a bottle of brown beef paper. It's a grand. Then by hand, I had one of the new ones. But see, the original is this. This is $300 an inch. I had this suit right here. They want to put it in the box line. I had like a 6 8 piece suit. Take your suit. Sometimes you want to put your money in a printer. Sometimes you want to put it in a plotter. Sometimes you want to put it on the screen. Depends on what you do. do. I still think the best thing is to find a friend who's what they use is as close as he can. It's not going to be you. It's not going to be the way you would use it. But as close as you can come on a friendly basis, a Saturday evening, just mess around. Because this is scary. It's not easy. It needs a handful. It gets complicated. Oh yeah, don't we all? I mean, that's the grunt work that we don't want to do. That's my that's my computer system. I typically use a menu board. I use a menu selection board. Oh yeah. See here's the Yeah, you tell it. There's an actual screen display of this dresser. But yeah, you, you tell it. It was disappointing. You tell it to all the time. Oh yeah. Well, there's about 18 or 20 different filters. I just You can't do a print. You can't do a print. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, you can do You can draw it and make template edges. So it's right here. It doesn't understand what I meant. <laughs> you bet. Do what I do what I want, not what I say. So <laughs> that I wanted to photograph one color sketch. And that was just something at my level at my level of spending money is not a you can approximate just as you can but no you have to draw it what makes it easier to draw you can auto trace every one of those edges now it sees it as a line drawing and not a photograph anymore and if you it's dead on, and dead on, your side in front of you, there's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. It does that part of the ground work a little bit quicker. And the kids, we're talking about three thousand dollars. I don't know what the ten to five thousand dollar boys are able to do, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out six thousand dollars. Turn a dresser into a nightstand, and what that'll have to do is most relevant, like rendering pictures, that sort of thing.
Let's start off hard here. With this mirror, I am so hard to go straight. I want to get a very different size. I want to be over and above. I want to pick it up and make it look like what I want to sell. Of course, if I ever have things like these, it's in Wall Street. If this mirror turns into a mirror, I can search it. It's like a very proud door. Search it. Oh, yeah. This is a very good well, you can get a modeling program put it in a bunch of experiences that you can put in an art. You can anywhere you want and attach a position to it. See, most of this is not to do with the hardware, but with the software. The program can go into the same computer and can do entirely new and do a new thing. <laughs> I saw a segmented watch mat, you know, one of these metallic things designed for four, sec four minutes um, at a demonstration this summer. That's right. Very clear. They drew one segment, and then they drew it, and then they, they copied the segment. They kept getting smaller so it looked like it went around your wrist, and then they said curve. Uh, a couple of degrees each segment. Mm -hmm. The whole thing just went mm -hmm. that fast. It just redrew on the screen. The whole thing curved. Right? Then they made it act like an inchworm. So you have to do all that kind of stuff. That is a four five hundred dollars. Yes, it's all the sizes are different. Thanks,
number of that's 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 Thank you. Thank you. 